In this section, I will shortly present basic information about scheduler within FreeRTLS. We are using operating systems to manage multiple tasks, many applications within our code. We can call it multitasking. Having one core, we can execute only one task at the moment, so we need some algorithm to manage it and to switch between the tasks. This is the main role of the scheduler. Usually, schedulers can work with a cooperative or preemptive configuration. Let's start from cooperative multitasking. It requires cooperation of all of the tasks. The context can be switched only when a running task goes to blocked state, for example by call of OS delay function, or it goes to ready state, for example by call of OS treat yield function, or is put into suspend mode by the system or other task. Tasks are not preempted with higher priority tasks. There is no time slice preemption as well. To activate this mode of multitasking, it is needed to define the config use preemption and set it to zero within freertos.h file. The next configuration is a preemptive one. It is a default within freertos. Within this configuration, tasks with the same priority share CPU time. Context can be switched when the task slice has passed, task with higher priority has come, task goes to blocked state by calling OS delay function, task goes to ready state, for example, by call OS thread yield function, and to activate this mode, it is needed to set to one config use preemption constant within freertos config.h file. We will use this configuration with our examples during this session. Cooperative with preemption by interrupt multitasking. It is a combination of both cooperative and preemption multitasking modes. In this case, interrupts are used to trigger context switch. It is in fact a preemption system without time slice. To activate it, we need to set to zero config use preemption within freertos config.h file. Scheduling. The scheduler is an algorithm determining which task should be executed. As you remember, only one task can be executed at one time if we are considering the single core microcontroller like STM32 devices, at least most of them. Common point between schedulers is that they distinguish between the task being ready to be executed, so in ready state, and those being blocked or suspended are not taken into the consideration. The main difference between schedulers is how they distribute the CPU time between the tasks in ready state. Within FreeRTLS, there is a round-robin mechanism implemented. Round-robin can be used with either preemptive or cooperative multitasking, depending on config use preemption constant set in FreeRTLS config.h file. It works well if response time is not an issue and all the task has the same priority. The possession of the CPU changes periodically after a predefined execution time called time slice is coming. This time slice is defined with the config tick rate hertz, which is defined in freertos config.h file. We can play as well with the execution time and the number of the tasks to be executed by setting the proper priorities for the tasks. So, in fact, by limiting the number of the tasks which are in a ready state. We will try to touch this topic later in this presentation. Now let's have a look at main functions available for scheduler management within CMC's OS v2 API. To initialize the RTOS kernel, we need to execute OS kernel initialize function. If we are using HIP5 memory, this is the place where the HIP regions needs to be initialized by calling the vport define HIP region function. Then the second function is uh, the function which is giving us information about the kernel. So it's version and ID if, if, if uh, set. The function is OS kernel get info. If you would like to have information about the current kernel state, we need to call OS kernel get state function. And as you can see, uh, it can return the values like OS kernel running, OS kernel locked, OS kernel ready, or OS kernel inactive. Next group of the functions. The most important one is the first one, OS kernel start. It is starting the operating system. It cannot be executed from interrupt. What this function is doing? It is setting the kernel state to OS kernel running and it is executing vtask start scheduler from freer to API. The second function, OS kernel lock, 
is used to freeze the operating system by suspending all of the tasks. The third one, OS Kernel Unlock, it is reversing this process by resuming all of the tasks. To check the current lock state of the kernel, we can use OS Kernel Restore Lock function. At the end, let's have a look on some supportive APA functions on scheduler. To get the RTOS kernel tick frequency, we should use OS kernel get tick frequency function. To get free RTOS kernel system timer count, we need to call OS kernel get system timer count function. And to get the free RTOS kernel system timer frequency, so SysTick frequency, we need to call OS kernel SysTick. Please have a look that all of those functions can be called as well from the user code and from the interrupt. Here in the table we can see the comparison among different APIs concerning function on the FreeRTOS scheduler. In fact, CMC's OS APIs are calling functions from FreeRTOS API, what you can verify within code inspection of your application. As an example, OS kernel start is in fact calling vtask start scheduler from FreeRTOS API, so original one. OS kernel lock is calling vtask suspend all, so suspending all of the tasks. OS kernel unlock is calling x task resume all function from FreeRTOS API. As you can see, CMC's OS API v2, which we are currently using uh, within this training, is much more complete than the previous one, which has not all of the functions implemented. Thank you for watching this video.